Yeah. Wish I could get rid of my buggers. <laughs> are, we, are we ready, gents? I suppose we could. Uh... Well, after the uh, after the joys of uh, Mike showing you the glorious tropical sunshine in Greece, I'm going to take you to a grim northern seaside town now <laughs> of uh, Markham. What a contrast! What a contrast! So. Yeah. A beautiful place. Hopefully, I've, what I've done, I've taken a lot of, I tried to do some video, I was up till about three last night trying to uh, add video and it decided it wouldn't work very well. So hopefully you can see the photos, which I'll slide across. I figured that I'll give you some views and talk you through the layout. It's, um, it's only a four foot um, scenic board um, from Tim Horn. Uh, which I picked up at Showcase a few years back and he's uh, done me a four foot fiddle yard board with slightly higher sides to match as well so it's uh, suitable for our our group have come up with a little sort of competition at the moment that we've got running uh, called Trunk of Funk and um, which the idea being is that our group will build a lot of small layouts that fit in our own vehicles that we can take to a lot of the shows up here and all the rest of it so it just adds like a bit that. of interest. Uh, it means we can go to the show because we do quite a lot of the Scottish shows um, so we can do them, it means we can take a small layout and still do demos alongside it and just have our usual banter and all the rest of it, which works quite well. So the, the station signs there, Graham Hedges did those as part of update and I quite like the way he put Markham and Wise, so I decided I'd just use those as the nameplates and he sent me the file and uh, attached to it, which was good. And then that gives you a little overview, that's, that's the entire scenic section really in one. It fits uh, Dil Dave Tilby's um, theory of only using one point on the scenic section, although he did have a heart attack when he saw the uh, fiddle yard point work. And there's the, there's the fiddle yard attached to it. Um, so it's got the higher side, so you can't see what's going on really. Um, and there's plenty of space underneath on Tim's boards, as always, for all the wiring and other bits and pieces. So, um, How long is that? Four foot, four, four foot uh, scenic and four foot fiddle yard. Uh, four and four. Yeah. And because I, I was running out of space in my train room, I kind of had this big IKEA storage cupboard that used to have feet on it, but I've turned it on its end and took the feet off. So it just gives you a nice shelf at a nice working height to uh, put all that. And I've got all my locals below it, which is quite handy now. So the fiddle yard, it's just, the fiddle yard's code 100 track just because it's what I had in stock. Um, so it's, it's very, very simple. It's got gauge master points underneath that are wired into a CDU. Um, and I used the bottom of an Oxford uh, vehicle case just to make a little control panel with the switches at the back. So they'll just all feed off the transformer into there, which is quite handy. Makes it nice and simple. Um, so again, it's the size of it. You can operate from the front or the back, depending on what, what you want to do. Um, and I'm still still working on the wiring underneath there. So although it's all wired up, quite neat, all colour coded. Um, the other thing I've used on the freeway point as well to make wiring easy, I use the Gauge Master Auto Frogs, um, which I'd seen them on Keith's layout, and they work absolutely faultlessly. Um, and I was trying to play around with these old micro switches that I had that I just could not get to work properly. Put the Auto Frogs in. It's just three wires, two to the um, DCC bus, and the other one has the frog wire to it and it absolutely faultless. You don't even need to worry. You don't have any shorts over it at all. It just knows, changes direction. You don't even get any blinking of lights or anything. So um, they work pretty well and they seem pretty reliable at exhibitions as well. Uh, having seen them on Keith and Martin's layouts as well. So it's, it's, a, it's a, quite a simple um, fiddle yard. It's just got the six roads in it. Probably a traverse would be better, but that's, that's what I had at the time and what I had to use up. So. It's quite handy for feeding the different units um, and I've also got at the front there a couple of the nuclear flash trains to run in and out as well. And there that gives you a bit of a, an overview so it's quite quite a decent sized space really. you can get quite plenty of stock on it for, for what you need for the playing with. And part of the reason I chose to do Markham is just because I collect quite a lot of the DRS locos um, and the, the nuclear flask wagons and so on. And I've also got 
plenty of northern units to run on it as well. So it's kind of the ideal little modern branch line, really, to kind of to kind of run and uh, put all that stock on. The other the other thing that appealed to me is um, being from Barrow. Like for many years, I used to go through to Markham quite regularly. I went there as a kid, um, but also. There used to be a really good train shop there as well, so you'd get all your model bits and pieces as well. So it was quite an easy excuse for a trip out. It was only about an hour away. Um, so I used to go there regularly. I knew the location. Um, and it's one of those little ideas that I thought would make into a nice little small compact layout. Um, and I kind of drew the plan for it about 10 years ago. Um, originally, RM Webb were going to do this 2010 inch challenge. And I drew out Markham based on that it would fit onto there. But once I had Tim's board and that all these years later, I decided that that would be, be an ideal thing. Just it's so you've got something set up permanently in, indoors in the house that you can just test stuff on, practice doing a few scenic bits and pieces, and it just gives you a nice little stop gap before I work on the bigger layout in the garage. So the view there is just looking across at the end of the, end of the line. Um, and uh, it's got the station building, the sort of brickwork down, using some of the skill scenes printed sheets there uh, and I've got to put in all the brickwork and it's got some fencing on that part that goes along the platform edge and a couple of sort of ornate flower beds and that with some little yuccas and little palm trees I've got in there and some tulips that will eventually get built in and then that front bit just finishing off with a little grass bank up onto the to the brick wall so that'll finish that part off quite nicely and um, the station the station building um, I kind of just worked out from photographs rough dimensions and what would fit the space drew it out on a card base and then it's just a case of then from once i've done my work in drawing sticking lots of bits of plastic strip so you've got a sort of a flat layer of plastic strip and then two mil square for the main uprights and then sort of one and a half mil for the middle ones and then one mil strip sections which i've just kind of cut by hand and plastic welded in place so there's still plenty of work to do on there but once that main bit's up the roof and that should be a little bit easier, hopefully, to do. Um, and it's just got some big sort of pillars and little brackets at the top of them, which I'll just make out of bits of plastic and so on to, to finish that off at some point. Mark? Yeah? The um, previous picture, you just want the picture, is that a model of you with your family? Um, it's just the Batman ones, but Ailey does think that's her as a little kid with uh, all her in the buggy. <laughs> <laughs> but she says she says I need to paint she said I need to paint it blue like the, the, the buggy that we've actually got. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then we're just working from pictures again, some that I've taken. Uh, I use the, the new Wills kind of um relay cabinets and that to make up the ones that sort of roughly represent what's there. Um and under that point I've used one of the Gage Master um digital fitted point motors which the beauty of that, it's got the little LED output. So I thought as a little clever way of doing it, I've wired it so that the, the white LED, is basically a couple of brass posts that run up with an LED soldered across it. Um, and basically when the points activated in the other direction, the white light will come on on the points board. So I'll, I will get that branded out as the points indicator one. Um, and I've just copied what I could see really from photographs with the trunking and other bits and pieces just to try and make it look as realistic as possible. Um, the, the, the fencing is the uh, new sort of Will's um, Palisade fencing, which I've painted in a sort of real track green colour, um, which is obviously a fun task having to paint that along, but it just look, does make it look a little bit better, a bit more realistic. And then I've started adding the uh, scenic elements along the front. So I've used the horse hair to make the brambles with the Gage Master kind of leaves on the top. Um, there's the sort of, I can't remember which flowers they were that I've got. And then the, um, Budlier bushes are from Tasma Scenics in the model tree shop. So I got those just before, well, just as we hit lockdown. I was going to get them at Perth Show, but they ended up getting sent to me, which is good. And then eventually I'll just finish off with where I've put sort of the green foamy bits down as the ground level bits. Those are the bits that will get covered and um, a layer of static grass on eventually, which will finish that bit off. Uh, that just gives you another view down it. Uh, the lighting was quite good. There was a supplier at Perth layouts for you that had quite cheap LED sets of lights. So I've used those for the platform ones. And again, they have the sort of fancy black ones for along the pavement area at the bus stops and the car park area. Um, and then hopefully I'll need to find some of the more modern type just for the footpath at the front as well to finish that off. So they're just all wired into 
like a little old um one of these sort of wall plugs for um I can't remember what it's for, but it's just one of these cheap adapter ones that you get in the house. I've just modified that for use for the lighting for the layout. But Mark? Yeah. Apologies if you mentioned it already, but the, the track looks very nice. And uh, whose track is that? Um oh so the track on this one, because when I did Rannock, I just used code one hundred and it was all painted carefully and all the rest of it. But um this is all the, the bullhead track from Pico. Ah, uh, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, but what I found as well, I used to just use one shade of like the, the rusty track colours, um, but I found there's another shade that Precision do which is slightly darker as well. So I've kind of used a mixture of that across the chairs and then there's um, the weathered wood for the sleepers as well, which has been brushed on. So it, it did take quite a while just to do that short bit of track, but I thought because it's right at the front and it's something you're going to be looking at, yeah, I thought it was worth doing just spending that time to get it weathered. And, and then same with the ballasting as well. I tend to get like those little, you know, like the little ramekin dishes you get with the sort of goo pots and that, the desserts. I use one of them and mix up various bits of woodland scenics. It's got some grey granite chips in, um, but because the ballast was quite dirty at Markham, it's got sort of the medium brown in it. Mark. Uh, yeah, yeah, those are the hey. ones. Yeah. yeah. In, it's all my grass and bits. Yeah. Well, you've got, to, you've got to eat the dessert first, which is always hey. an advantage. In it so she, she's absolutely addicted to them as well so she buys them every week i'm like what am i gonna do with these little glass pots <laughs> <laughs> i've got a stack of them as well uh, but yeah they're quite good for, for mixing the ballast and i've also found you put that really fine dark brown woodland scenic ballast in the really fine stuff and yeah. it just gives you all that different particle size that you sort of once you bed it in and that with a little teaspoon and a brush and that it kind of Helps make a make a bit of a difference and adds to the realism as much as possible. I think, and, look, I think your track looks lovely. And the bit the track at the back has got. I wanted to use a bit of that metal sleeper stuff as well that we've done, um, and I just spaced that out to match the bullhead sleepers, so it looks a bit more a bit more realistic. The other the other thing I like about the Pico one is it's got the little the rail joiners you've got. It's got the bolt head detail on as well. So I did, I did mark it out because it was all sectional tracks still on there into the sort of 60 foot panels and then just put the um, fish plates on in place as well just to give that right, right effect really. That just gives you a close up of the station building. Um, so that's coming together. The CAD, it's funny when Carl gave that tip before about the printed stuff, that would have been a really good tip actually because as soon as you put the glue on, the cardboard did bend up a bit in that one, which it'll be fine once it's all glued in place permanently, but yeah, you'd certainly save all that hassle. Uh, and that's just a little bit of, I use the Metcalf paving slabs and edging as well, just to kind of do all that. And stupidly, because it's a small layout, I decided that everything needed to be at angles to sort of draw the eye when you're looking at it, create a bit of interest, which is good, but it makes everything a pain. So even like the parking spaces and that, all had to be done at the angle and lots of bits cut out and all the rest of it. But it does, does just gives you that bit more of a soft edges, a bit more realism, which is quite good. Yeah. There's, a, there's some buses, because I know how much everyone likes buses. And <laughs> they're, they're not on bridges, but I've built the proper bus stops outside the station. And that's got that scale model scenery kind of decorative fencing, which is sort of laser card, um, which I quite liked as well. So got quite an appropriate bus as well for the layout with that one that we've done and then i wanted no, to yeah what were you, were you saying that's on the bus you've used scale model scenery stuff on the bus no see the fencing just in front of it the pavement the black, the black no oh, the black, black fencing sorry yeah okay they've got that quite nice decorative sort of swirls and that in it so i use that on there which is just how it comes and then painted black okay sorry missed that no that's i've got some more of it to put down on the the sort of ramp it down towards the um the station building um, oh the pedestrian the pedestrian uh fencing yeah yeah so that was quite nice and then um i've got some other stuff that needs painted sort of in that provincial sort of dark blue shade that's going to go along the sort of sides of the platform edging and the, the ramp bit down to the station as well Excuse me, Mark. Who's is yeah. that fencing? Who's is that fencing at the back of the pavement? The the, um, the green fencing is the 
Uh, is it ratio that do it in the little packet? Don't know. I'm asking you. I yeah, don't no, know. I think it's, um, it's ratio or wills. It's one of those two that do the um, sort of modern platform, well, fencing. So it's that that ride fencing that they do in a little pack. It, is, was it meant to be garden fencing? Um, I can't I can't remember what they described that one as, but it's, they sort of do describe it as wooden fencing for long yeah. lines gardens and all the rest of it but it's just brush painted with um i think it's a tamia shade of green so it sort of gives you that sort of um painted wood look which the stuff at the station was painted in like a green color and just various bits of like the static grass clumps and that put in for the ballast as well and then i've got a pack of that um they've got a pack in that scale model scenery the, the rubbish and bags and crisp packets which i'm going to eventually cut out and add to that area as well which should hopefully add to the scene a little bit more yeah. i'll see you question, mark, see. please is what can i ask a question please mark i can what are you going to do behind the buses nothing, the buses? <laughs> oh, nothing. Oh, sorry difficult question <laughs> no it's um no i decided when i did this one i was just gonna leave it i just sort of painted in the plain sky blue um because i thought i'll give that a go and see how it looks i did want to put in more but um i decided with the depth of the layout on this one it was meant to be a fairly quick project as well as just using bits and pieces i had in stock yeah. Um so i decided that, uh, that that was that was the intention instead of I could have gone there and done a nice photographic back scene of what you actually see there really because there's like an old there's a sort of BT telecoms building at one end um, but the whole scene would be a bit compressed up anyway but yeah so I decided I'm just gonna leave it the easy route and just leave it plain blue <laughs> oh okay then thank you <laughs> yeah. um so yeah no it's a bit of a it's a little bit of a cop out on that one but no i just decided it was meant to be like just a say more a, a quicker quicker project so i can move on to the bigger one in the garage mark mark yeah it's nice to see the um scale model scenery pl platform edging which i've got some of as well for my platform yeah well I, literally the, when, when I, I put a reply on somewhere on the sort of Facebook page about when they're being a bit cheeky saying when Paul said do some modeling so I was up quite late doing that on Friday and um, so I've still got to kind of blend in all the joints and everything but I'm really annoyed because there's one bit in the middle which you can just see in that photograph next to the lamppost where I've lifted I pulled it back up slightly and because yep. I always make sure I put a full layer of PVA so that nothing will come back up or fall apart um, and when I started running stock I realized I've um, made that one a little bit too wide and um, it will now scrape the stock will scrape against the edging so i'm going to take that section out and just uh, get it fitted back in properly but yeah it looks it looks all right in fairness once it's down and once i put a bit of <laughs> weathering and blending down through the middle and that it'll be fine i've got some um like weathered stone color real match acrylic paint and that which i think will go quite nicely to fill the gaps and so on yeah and you cannot you can also down the join where the lamp posts are you can make that a drain can't you yeah, there is, on a couple of bits, I've cut out the drain pack and that and put it in there, which again will just need a little bit of metal colour on the edging. Um, but yeah, and the other bit I'll do is probably put some of the joint lines down where they've sort of put the cabling through and all the rest of it. And well, they print a drain, don't they? Yeah. They do a, pr a printed drain cover. Yeah. Um, and there's also, at the other end, there's, there's going to be, there's a platform shelter needs built that goes on the platform. So I need to build that out of plastic strip at some point. Um, and one of the lampposts, I accidentally blew it when I was um, testing it, when I was putting the wiring together, which is a bit stupid. But what I'm going to do where that one's not working, I've got some of the little barriers and that, so I'm going to put a little cameo scene and have the barriers around it where they're working on it to get it operational again, just to add to it. Mm, nice. um, and then the bridge, the bridge is just the sort of Will's girder sections glued together and um, some of the girder section at the bottom is off the Backman BDA wagons. And then for the, the actual support, so wooden, the sticks you get on ice lollies. So I've got a couple of them which I've cut down for the support with some plastic strip sections and bolt head detail added in the middle for the bracing. So it gives you the right sort of effect, hopefully. Very nice, that. Yeah, it looks good. And the, the, the brick wall at the end is um, it's based 
on the type of wall in you find in Barrow, um, there used to be, it's actually based on a photograph of the wall in along the back of the Tesco, um, which used to, years ago, used to have Big Maggie's Farm written across it in yellow paint and all the rest of it from, in the 80s. Um, but Tim did that on his cutter at one point for us for Newlands Park. We've got a whole section of it and they were the last sort of offcuts, which just worked out ideal for that one. Mm. Uh, the, yeah, the buildings up on the bridge, again, I wanted to have the whole angle bit going on so it sort of draws you that it's only a small scene. So the, the old uh, Hornby kits that you get, you know, that used to be like seven or eight quid or something for a pack. And it's very crudely hacked across at the back and at the side at the top so that it fits into the angle quite nicely. And uh, being Markham, I've sort of gone for the sort of traditional thing. So the one at the end is going to be a chippy which I've made a sort of a new PVC daughter go in it and I'll, I'll add in like the little open window details and so on and I'll have a sort of the plain sort of fish and chip sign. I might make a, an illuminated box one coming out of it and then there's going to be a pie shop next door as well um, which I'm going to put call it Markham and Pies as a little bit of a pun <laughs> and then upstairs in a couple of the terrace windows I decided you know when you sort of go around Blackpool and these sort of places you often see these um, XXX massage parlours everywhere. So I'll, I'll have a little sign out on the street and it'll be a Madame, Madame Brothel's massage parlour upstairs. Never yeah. noticed that sort of thing myself, <laughs> Mark. Have you not? It's, it's <laughs> a sort, of thing, sort of thing I always noticed as a kid. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there used to be plenty of Bournemouth as well up Holdenhurst Road when you used to walk up to the, uh, the model shops up there. <laughs> Mark, I'd stop digging that if I was you. Yeah, you said enough. <laughs> it's getting the detail right, Carl. You need to do the research, isn't it? <laughs> so yeah, it's just, it's just it fills the corner and it adds to the scene a little bit. And then I've got some of the Langley uh, seagulls and all the rest of it to paint up, which I'll I'll dot around the scene uh, and a few other bits and pieces. So yeah, that'll it's got a bit of work there to progress to get that looking right. Um, and again, I just, oh. these are things, yeah. Um, seagulls, I think the Langley ones are, are too big. You're better off getting the dark casting ones. All right. So I had a mixture of both. and had to make the Langley ones into black, black back girls because they're really big. And the dark casting ones into um, black headed girls because they're really small. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'd be better off with the dark casting ones. No, could I'll, they not I'll, do one with the with the wings out, kind of like that? And you could have it perched like it's going to crack down the side of the. <laughs> I, I I do have some of those just for that purpose, guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've already got I've already got a few bits and pieces kicking about because you know what it's like. Every time they come to Glasgow, it was one of those little stands that you can go and pick out the little bits in the little little yeah. drawer. So you end up with loads of individual bits and pieces, which. We'll get painted up and added to it. So yeah, I've got a few bits and bobs, a couple of cats and dogs and so on. Yeah. Uh, there's just a couple more views looking across at the, the relay cabinets and so on. Another one. The the um the buffer stops are um the Dave Franks ones from uh, Annexure Model Supplies. So they they are they're really nice uh, white metal ones that go together well, but they just seem yeah. to match the prototype quite well. For what I needed there, and then I've got a few. I move on to a few with the stock on it. So there's one of the one five threes, and I, I put because of the way the circuit board is. It's got an old house sound chip in that one because I did that one ages ago. Um, but I also had one of the Dapple Engage light bars, which just fits at the end of their circuit board, the crossing the roof bit. So although it looks a bit odd with half of it in darkness when it's completely at night. It just meant I could put a few people in and bits and pieces and just sort of added to it, especially with the 150 and the 144 having interior lights as well. Um, I've, I've also got quite a few of the um, West Coast locos just being quite handy at Carnforth, so it's quite close by. So you can just get away with that sort of half charter train effect. A couple of coaches and a local will fit in one of those sidings and running in and out. So you can sort of still run anything you want, really. And there has been there has been charter trains there, so there is there's even been visits by class forties and all sorts over the years. Yeah, 
the old station at Morecambe used to see peaks on a regular basis for services from Leeds, didn't they? Yeah. Before, yeah, before I, re I only, I can only remember standing on the old platforms once when there was like an old 108 rattling away in there. Um, and that was about it. That's about the only time I ever went onto the platform. And it was in a real state of decay at that point. I'd love to see the old station in the days when they had the overhead trains. Um, yeah. We converted them, um, London Northwestern ones from free rail to overhead. That must have been quite a good service. Yeah, because, well, although I've moved this road bridge right up, where you sort of go under the real one on the real Markham, you've got the line that branches off to the right to, to Hesham, and that sort of curves off. And then, sort of more or less to the left hand side, those lines are the ones that are still in place that go up to Bear Lane and back onto the West Coast main line. And then the old electric line used to sort of go off into the middle of those and through to green air. Yeah. Mark? I'm yeah? I'm glad you pronounced Hesham right. Why? Everybody says Haysham, don't they? But he, I oh, know yeah, it's Hesham. Yeah, you do hear that, yeah. Yeah. Because I had a customer at Hesham. <laughs> oh, did you? Sorry, you yeah. <laughs> are you talking That's... about Haysham? There's um there's actually there's actually someone I know that lives in the lift go that she's she's from Hesham originally and yeah. her mum used to do the tours around the power station there. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have been around the power station before in the past. Yeah, well that that was my customer. Oh really? Yeah, I remember uh going there one day and uh, the little sentinel was coming along the, the track with a flask. And All I right. thought, oh, if only I'd got my camera. And then I thought, well, perhaps not, because there's a guy in front of it with a machine gun, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, this, this is just this is just one of the, the when when I say I've got a bit of an obsession with the DRS fleet, I've modelled more than more than I really should have done. And I don't tell the wife the exact number. Um but that's one of the 57s, which I particularly like that one with all its branding and so on on it. Um, even though it's changed into its 20th anniversary livery. So I've just kept the original, well, the more original version of it after it left um, Virgin Service. Did you put that, those on the side, the transfers? Or was it oh, done? That, that one was quite handy, actually. I pretty much swapped um, a Virgin liveried one that somebody wanted. Um, that one of Colin's customers wanted, and I got that one off him instead. <laughs> so it's quite a nice swap, that one, really. Well, who did who did it in that livery then? Um, Rain, Rainbow Railways. Oh right. So yeah, they, Colin and Mike live quite close to me, so it was just uh, they had a customer that wanted a Virgin one. I said, I've got a Virgin Lady Penelope, and then I said, but I want that one, <laughs> so I swapped it. <laughs> right which was quite nice um, and then it's just got biff sound in that one as well um i think i've got another one of the 153 but there's i run a lot of the trains nowadays are top and tailed so i've got a pair of the sound fitted 57s there that i can run with a couple of flash wagons in and out um just run over to, to activate this the tps grids and so on um and they, they can run in and out there and then i've got various other units so like the 150 runs on it as well mm. um, the thing that's quite interesting as well about that line is that technically they can run two trains and you do see two trains in the platform but to access the the bay, that rear platform both lines are bi-directional from just past the triangle at, um, at Bear Lane well just beyond Bear Lane there's a sort of triangle where it connects with the west coast and basically if you're on the far side track which you'd think would be the normal sort of down route, um, you can only access the bay platform and anything that's going on the other platform can access the Hesham line as well. So the inferior run as two separate independent lines. I've got a 144 like you, Mike. <laughs> uh, and did you have any trouble with it? Um, no, um, I did take it apart when I got it and put sound in it, and that's that's it. And I do need to take it apart again at some point to put people in. Um, but having Charlie gave me one at Glasgow one year to 
fit a decoder in for someone. I remembered they were right pain because the light guides at the cabins. Um, but once you get past that, you're all right generally. Well, I had to do I had to do so much filing and chopping and re-gluing to try and get the bodies back on in the right place. It it was a nightmare, an absolute nightmare. And not only that, once I'd got it on the back on the track, I was getting I was I was getting it shorting out on a few points. I thought this isn't right. When I checked, all the back to backs were fourteen point naught. <laughs> <laughs> they, they are a bit of a pain to get it's, on that version it's light guides and they did revise it slightly on the 143 um, but yeah they're, they're so wide where they fit in um, and you, you sort of have to pull it that far apart that you can end up end up bits pinging off I think I've got a fire extinguisher loose in the cab on one of mine <laughs> well uh, all, nearly, all, nearly all the uh, uh, what do they call them um, the hydraulic dampers on yeah. the suspensions fell off mine. The handrails kept falling off inside the doors. Oh yeah, yeah. The um, panels kept falling over inside. Yeah, yeah it was an absolute nightmare. Uh, it's just and the and the, and as for the gears and the wheels and everything else, <laughs> it was so. When I first got it, it was so tight it wouldn't turn. I had to strip it all down and put it all back together, the whole lot. Mm. There's quite a lot of work in that as well, isn't there? Oh, tell me about it. I shan't yeah. be buying a 156. The 156 is mm. a totally fine. <laughs> People used to moan about Lima. I don't know. <laughs> no. The, yeah. the, the only reason I know the 156 is a fine is I've rebuilt that many of the resprayed ones. I've probably built about 70 or 80 of them now. <laughs> What? Hmm. I've got a pile. I've got. I've got a pile of eighteen units here now. <laughs> have you ever done a? Have you ever done a Hurst detailing kit for a one five six? No. I have. They were fun. Who's that? Me. Hi, Mike. Oh, hello, Tim. You've you've done you've done one or two. Yeah, I know you've probably yeah. done one or two. Yeah, my I did, did a uh, SPT orange one, and it was. Um, wasn't too bad, but uh, yeah, it's fun. No, the, the one five six is the circuitry is absolutely fine. I can um, I can get any even the last couple of faulty ones I've had. I can fix those all right. <laughs> but I've done enough of them now. <laughs> There's a uh, that's just one of the another flask working. This pair really is going to be eventually. I might build a one of the Highland mainline working so. This one in feed is a pair that worked up there, up to George was Junction and that, so I've got a pair of PFAs to go with those as well. They, they raise quite a lot of money now, aren't they, on eBay apparently, the flask wagons? Yeah. I should probably flog the one that I've got. I think you'll get, well, they seem to go for about £50 at the minute. Wow. Which, yeah. I've got a fair few of them <laughs> and then this this was just a sketch a uh, when I do scratch built buildings I, I, I sort of make a working drawing and um, just with all the dimensions so that I don't forget what sizes bits and pieces are meant to be um, and it also just helps you draw it out to get it to look right for your space because you can never sometimes when you scale an actual building in size it just might not look completely right so you can just alter the roof shape and height and that till it sort of looks right for photographs um, to fit the space, so it's exactly kind of what I did with Rana when I built that. Um, and yeah, this one was just a bit of a pain working out of those little bits of plastic. Um, but yeah, it should come together. Now I've built the mainframe part, adding the door, and then the roof bit should be touch wood a lot, lot easier. Uh, Mark, how are you glazing it out of interest? Um, I just tend to use, I've got some, um, I've got some sort of thin glazing sheet, but I, I tend to just cut out packaging. So when you get the blister packs of like brickwork from Wills and that, I tend to just cut bits and pieces of that to, to fit. Okay. And then just uh, use a bit of clear to stick it all on. Oh, cool. And then I've got to build that shelter at some point. <laughs> so that'll be, that'll be a bit of fun because it's the top brackets that are a nice awkward shape to do. 
Um, but yeah, that should that should work. That will fill the main gap in the platform. He's, I, had to, I don't know where my original photos are. They're on some computer somewhere. So I thought I'd just show you some of the prototype ones that I, I took when I went to Markham one day and um, that uh, I've had to just sort of take out the update magazine because <laughs> I can't find the originals. But it sort of shows you some of the detailed bits and pieces I was trying to work and recreate as much as possible. And you can see how much of a compression I had to make to, to, to fit the space really as well. Yeah, I see what you mean. I've still got all that bit to do with the sort of front flower bed and the steps up from the pavement at the front. Um, but I have got, there's other pictures I've seen online of it when it was actually sort of planted nicely with tulips and all the rest of it. So I've got some of them as well to put in just to make it look a bit, bit nice and fresh. <laughs> And that's that, that's the actual view looking back from well where the line's truncated nowadays. How much further did it go on from there to the original Morecambe? Um, not well, not much further. Um, probably not even a mile or so because sort of behind when you look down and you've got like what was Blockbuster Video and all the rest of it, the line just sort of curved round just ever so slightly to the right there. Mm -hmm. um, and, the station building still sits there, so you can see it on Google Maps. The actual main sort of station building still sits on the front of Markham, and okay, then behind, and then behind it, they've got they built like a market hall, and there's a KFC and a cinema and all the rest of it. So basically, where where the sort of Markham station was, it's all there, and then the rest of it on the far side is like where the road runs, and there's Morrison's and all the rest of it now, mm -hmm. and like the bowling. But it's all it's all changed a bit. Wow. Oh, thank you. And that was all the photos. So hopefully I might be able to take this over to the layout and run a couple of trains for you, hopefully. Clive, you'll might need your earplugs in because you don't like the sound. Can we have that one four three? Prove that it runs. <laughs> Prove it runs. <laughs> Just for Mike. Can you see all right? Can you see the layout? <laughs> yes. Oh yes. Oh, I can prove mine rooms as well, Joey. Make sure it's got the sounds on for um, Paul. Yeah, I do enjoy a good sound. <laughs> Paul. Sound on off, yes. Paul, that's what we need to do. When the sound comes on, put your fingers in your ears. Yeah. Sounds quite quiet. Yeah, they put it on soft. You want to hear the unit over the thirty sevens now? No sound. This is too far away. It, it could just be that. Oh, there you go. I think you can hear the thirty sevens, all right. I think Zoom has built into it a noise cancelling. Uh, you can actually uh, enable original sound um, on your own uh, video. Then you actually hear what's coming ah, through. Thank you, Tim. 
So that's probably in preferences, Mark. It no, it's be, it'll be where it says more. If you're on, a, if you're on a, um, an app. And as I was saying about the um, the point, because it's all digital wired, isn't it? There's only one point you need to remember for the code on the scene exception. And just when you change it, the light will go off. And when you change it to that direction, the mark light comes on. So it just makes it dead simple, but just adds to the operation of the layout a little bit. Yeah, that's good. Mark, what DC system are you using? Um, normally I use um, the Podigy, um, but I've also got a lens set to use. Um, so uh, as a group, we kind of bought a couple of lens sets that we can just use on kind of mm, club layouts, mm. if you like. Yeah. Is that the LH100? Yeah. Yeah, it's a good system. It's what I've got. Yeah. And the advantage of the Podigy one is just the amount of functions that you've got on it, especially now some of the sound chips have got, they got to like F25 and all the rest of it, so mm. it makes it quite uh, quite handy. Just for I, all that. Say really. that again, you're using a Prodigy? No, I, I do use a Prodigy, but um, I've got a lens set as well. If the, I use multi-mouse with my lens set, and you've got 20 functions on that, which is pretty handy. Oh yeah, cause, well this will go up to something like 29, 30 functions. Okay. Oh, blimey. Which there is some stock now will uh, will go up to that. Yeah, because the uh, lengths will only go up to twenty eight. Have you taken it to many shows, Mark? No, it's still, because it's still a work in progress, it's not gone to anything yet. 
showcase next year? Finish it off? <laughs> uh, well, yeah, it should be finished by then. You're coming anyway, right? Yeah. So we don't need to pay your petrol. Well <laughs> 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 said, guy. <laughs> Is it Martin would come with you or? I can't remember. Uh, the, whole lot, the whole lot will come. Is it Keith then, everyone? I, I can't remember if I've got any layouts down from your lot for next year. Uh, it'll be for this, would have been for this year. Let me have a look. I'll have a look at the. There'll be, yeah, there'll be the usual crowd. It'll be like me, Martin, Rod, Mike, Keith, probably. I think that'll be the uh, that'll be that'll be all of us. Oh, I can't wait. We it'd be good to have a proper show again. <laughs> We're going to have to be able to do it by next year, aren't we? I mean, hopefully. Hopefully, yeah. So that uh, that kind of concludes where we're up to just now with it, really. Very good, Mark. Just how, how did you do your bus shelters? The curve. Well, those are just the um, Backman ones. Oh right. <clears throat> for some for some unknown reason, it's one of those things. You know, when you're in different shops and that, you end up picking up lots of bits and pieces. And I've got a whole box of kind of scenic materials and that. So I just kind of went through it and found what I had. I've actually got two packs of those. Don't know what I'm going to do with the other one yet. See you, bye. But well, I've been uh, when lockdown started. I end up selling quite a bit of stuff on eBay, just models that just do not fit any layout plans for the future. Like my nuclear flasks. <laughs> <laughs> I got rid of mine. I, are they just, I was going to do Olympia at one point. Uh, nah, nah, it's not going to ever happen now. I'll turn that back. But the, the biggest, uh, the kind of biggest issue I end up having is I've got nuclear flasks for that era and I've also done a load of flash trains for the, um, for the 90s as well. Right, I just, saw, I just seen the class 950s you got there, Mark. How many? Uh, there's four on the build at the minute. Good grief. Yeah, it's um, yeah. The, the worst. Well, I've got Vic Berry's uh, scrapyard of 156s at the minute there <laughs> ready for stripping. Best thing uh, for them. And then that's the pile of stuff that I'll have for oh stripping my. and rebuilding. God. <laughs> so, yeah. But what's the basis of the 950 out of interest? Is it uh, um, just what Batman. you which kit? <laughs> it's. Um, it's a lot of Collins parts, so it's his own etches and various 3D printed parts and so on. Ooh. I'm interested in that because I need to do one of my uh, one myself. We can buy one from Rainbow. Ah, what the parts or? I don't know. He's got. There's a friend of his that's over Glasgow where that does all the filling and bits and pieces, and then um, Collins sprays them and prints them, and then. Right. I just do the uh, rebuild of them occasionally. So basically all I need is the parts to do with either the doors and then I can paint one up in the original research livery. But I think these ones, he has done those as well in the other liveries, but yeah, these ones I think will end up at Olivia's trains. I think these, that's who they're for this time. Mm -hmm. Sh Shane does a set of etches. Shane Walton does etches. Oh, Shane doesn't. Okay. Yeah, right. I've got a set. I've got a set. I did, a, did one of these in the original. Oh, I did it in the lighter, in the lighter blue. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if if it wasn't if it wasn't for building one five six, I'd probably mm -hmm. have that. Uh, they'd probably have Mark and more or less finished by now. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, yeah. Thanks very much for showing your layout. That's a lovely little layout. Um, can't wait to see it in in real. Yeah, well, yeah. It's just I say, it's just one of those little things. It's just a bit of fun that fits in the room permanently, so I can test stuff and that. But it was one of those little layouts I thought I'd been wanting to do for a while and yeah, just decided to get on with it. I'll see you all later. I'm off from your team now. Cheers, see Mark. Five. Cheers, Clive. Cheers. Five. Cheers. Enjoy it.
I need you to feel for about another four hours, Mark. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> if you want to start on those one five sixes or something, I, I, it's up to you. You know, <laughs> I might watch him paint dry. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't have to do any of the painting. I just strip them down and rebuild them. Oh. <laughs> oh, you're just a layman, though. You just do the yeah, yeah, yeah. grunt yeah. work. Blacking. Yeah. Yes. Middle man. It's the middle. It's the middle man. Exactly, yeah. It's quite, been quite handy during lockdowns, and I can't open my business till I don't know where. <clears throat> What's your line of work, out of interest? Um, I've got a children's soft play oh. Oh. so yeah it even uh, and even by Boris's rules that soft plays and nightclubs aren't allowed to open <laughs> mm. oh dear better go to Barnard Castle instead <laughs> yeah <laughs> don't need to go as far we've got the palace I can go 